Campaigning for the seventh phase of Lok Sabha polls comes to an end. Heavyweight scramble for last-minute rallies across seven states. TMC moves Election Commission against Narendra Modi for raising allegations against Mamta. BJP condemns TMC's statement on Modi. Bitter war of words continues between the Congress and the BJP over Wadra land deal video. Parties exchange heated remarks over the row. And a Jharkhand court rejects anticipatory bail to BJP's Giriraj Singh for his controversial remarks against Modi's critics. While campaigning for the seventh phase of the Lok Sabha elections ended last evening, the fate of uh, the candidates in 89 Lok Sabha constituencies and assembly constituencies will be on test tomorrow. Among them will be the leading lights of the two main national parties as well. Here's a report. Campaigning for the seventh phase of the Lok Sabha elections ended today. 89 constituencies in seven states and two union territories will go to poll on Wednesday. It will be the fourth largest phase in the nine-phase election exercise. Voting will take place for all 26 seats in Gujarat, 17 seats in the Telangana region, 9 in West Bengal, 14 in Uttar Pradesh, 13 in Punjab, 7 in Bihar and 1 each in Jammu and Kashmir, Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. Besides the Lok Sabha seats, 130 assembly constituencies in Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal will also face elections on 30th of April. Campaigning also ended today for the assembly elections in Andhra Pradesh and the other states that are having by-elections. Many big leaders are in the fray in this phase. The BJP's Prime Ministerial nominee Narendra Modi will face his electoral test in Varodra on Wednesday. Amritsar sees a battle of heavyweights between BJP's Arun Jaitley and former Punjab Chief Minister Captain Amrinder Singh. BJP President Rajnath Singh is contesting from the Lucknow seat that goes to elections on Wednesday. Rai Bareilly, a Congress stronghold, is also going to polls in this phase. Sonia Gandhi is the sitting MP from here. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Joining me in the studio this morning on India Votes is the Economic Times, uh, CL Manoj. Very good morning, Manoj, and thank you for joining us here in our studio. Of course, an interesting uh, day ahead tomorrow as well, a very crucial day. Of course, uh, we've reached the home stretch now. Six phases are over, just three more phases to go, but tomorrow's phase is also going to be extremely crucial. I think it's becoming very, uh, in the last two days, the way the campaign has become mm. very aggressive, very vocal, and I may even say very bitter. It also shows the intensity of the fight on the ground. And so tomorrow we are going to witness elections in important states, apart from UP and Bihar. Mm. Uh, B uh, Punjab, which is very important in the point of view of the Congress party. Gujarat, where Narendra Modi is uh, trying to have the maximum Lok Sabha seats from his own home state when he is being projected as he's, the BJP. He's trying to win it all from yeah. there, that's what he's saying. Yeah, that's what he's trying. But uh, let's see how, uh, whether he'll be able to have a clean sweep hmm. or, you know, unlike last two Lok Sabha elections, when we saw that Congress is being completely defeated in the Assembly election, they managed to hold on to some seats yes. in the Lok Sabha. So whether this time uh, the same thing will happen or Narendra Modi's projected candidature for PM ship will help him to have a bigger, you know, ship in the Gujarat, we have to see. Mm -hmm. But then Telangana, a new state, for the first time there is going to be an election, even though the formal uh, announcement of the state will come only after that. But the elections are being held in Andhra Pradesh with people know that it's no more one state. Yes. So uh, Andhra Pradesh helped the Congress in a big way in 2004 and 2009 uh, in uh, forming the government in UPA. So today there is no YSR, uh, the bigger, uh, the biggest leader of the Congress in yes. the recent past. There is crisis in the Congress on the Simantra side, but they are trying to hold on in Telangana while facing a very big challenge from TRS. So very interesting elections, and of course people will be eagerly watching to see how the turnout in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, because uh, the more the uh, separatist call for the boycott. The ordinary people came in a big chunk to sort of show their enthusiasm in participating in the mainstream uh, democratic mm, exercise. Mm, so mm. everybody will be also seeing how it happens this time in Kashmir. Yes, indeed. All eyes will be on Kashmir to figure out exactly how the voter turnout yeah. is over there in Kashmir. But on the whole, by and large, the voter turnout this time around has been considerably high. Something to be happy about, isn't it? Yeah, it's very good because whenever the elections, it is uh, very good for our democracy that mm. more and more people come and vote for it. And I think a lot of credit for that also goes to the election commission mm. because they had been for months and years, they have been campaigning. Uh, they have been bringing in, uh, you know, major personalities, celebrities to attract the voters. 
to convey the message which is very important and also goes to the credit of the ordinary people when they yes, are very indeed. busy indeed. they find the time and they feel uh, it's important that they should participate and you know deciding who should be you know uh, deciding their destiny for at least 5 years or so i think that also great youth uh, participation in election yes, indeed. there has been i mean that's that's something that i wanted to talk about as well first time voters and young voters you know below the mm. age of 25 there is there seems to be quite a few of them actually who are thronging these uh, these yeah. polling stations and going ahead and voting and and I, and I guess the social media has played quite a uh, quite a big role in this as well yeah that's true because uh, Pereira, you know that india is also one country which is increasingly growing young because we have the largest uh, young population yes. in our country you know almost 70% uh, of our voters are can be called young about 40 or there is a, a huge category of voters below 30. Mm. So it's very heartening to see that these youngsters coming out because they think that they should have a say in the whole electional process. And also, as you rightly said, that you know social media is very active, all uh, television, print, you know, these are all active and also adding to the people's enthusiasm and the awareness that they should be participating. But I think the final credit should be given to these people, young and old, who make it a point to be there in the uh, voting uh, polls those days. Indeed, indeed. Mm. The credit needs to go to uh, to the voter, in fact, who has gone out and voted in large numbers. And we'd like to see the same tomorrow as well. Please go out there and vote. I, I, I ensure that you make a difference. Now, meanwhile, of course, Andhra Pradesh could play the role as one of the biggest swing states this poll season. This is something that Manoj was talking about earlier as well. Now, with the formation of Telangana, parties are scrambling to take credit for Telangana and Ghana as much support. 17 seats will be at stake when the region votes in a day's time. Here's a look at what to expect. Lok Sabha election has now entered its last three phases. The coming two phases will be crucial for both the national alliances as their survival is at stake in Telangana and Simandra region. These two new states could pose a potential challenge to the ambition of the national parties. TRS will be a crucial factor in Telangana after its years of movement demanding bifurcation of United Andhra Pradesh. After the centre's nod, the party hopes to reap the benefits, which could also mean Congress losing its ground. In the 2009 elections, Congress won a handsome 12 seats out of the 17 that falls in Telangana. Both TRS and TDP managed only two each. Amim's Asaduddin OVC was the winner from the Hyderabad seat. With the changed political scenario, Congress will face a tough challenge from the TRS. K. Chandrasekhar Rao, the TRS chief, refused to ally with Congress for the Lok Sabha and Assembly polls. The move has left Congress out in the cold with no partners in the region. Political observers believe that pre-poll alliance between TRS and Congress could have helped the party. Congress's arch rival BJP has struck an alliance with TDP to gain as much from the 17 seats at stake. However, it remains to be seen if TRS manages to gain big from the region that was instrumental to the formation of UPA 1 and 2 government since 2004. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, we saw that, that figure there, 17 yeah. very crucial seats, of course. And uh, that, that, that's the thing now with Telangana, isn't it? I mean, it's a battle for credit. The TRS and the Congress are locked in a battle of who should get credit for the formation of Telangana. Even the Prime Minister, who doesn't say much, just a week ago came out and spoke about it and said that the TRS shouldn't walk away with the credit. It is the Congress that ensured that uh, uh, a state of Telangana is being carved out. Yeah, that's true, because in Telangana, it's a very high-stake uh, political battle this time. Because as you are aware that uh, Andhra Pradesh, the largest state from the South India, it has been a traditional stronghold of the Congress yes. party. In fact, it is under the YS Rajasekhar Reddy's leadership that in 2004 and 2009, the party came out with a stunning performance which helped the party form the government and take an upper hand in the coalition politics in Delhi. But today, there is a leadership crisis uh, and number two, that is the leadership crisis that did result to the revival of the Tamil, uh, Telangana agitation by TRS and finally centre uh, thought that it's tactically uh, important for them to concede. So 17 states, as you said that the Congress party would like to say it is because of the Congress party and they repeatedly take the name of Sonia Gandhi yes. to say that it is because of her that you got it. So you, this is the Thanksgiving election and that's what they want to project. But the fact also remains that TRS uh, and Chandrasekhar Rao of late had managed to project themselves as the sole champion of this 
uh, agitation mm. for statehood. So, obviously, he would also try to say it is he delivered. But as uh, I had gone to Telangana, because Telangana has two sides, south and northern yes. sides. So, I think the politics may play out in a very interesting way. Mm. And I don't think either Congress or TRS is going to have a complete sweep of the state. Okay. So, I think we will have very interesting uh, outcome there. <laughs> very interesting outcome. So, certainly TDP will be licking their lips at the moment because that's the third party in the fray there. And But, but the problem really with the TDP is Chandrababu has, Chandrababu Naidu has been a fence sitter all this while. He has not really gone with, with either a Telangana or a Simandra region. So, so he seems to be uh, in, a, in a bit of a quandary there, especially in Telangana. Yeah, because you know, unlike TRS, TRS is a party coming only from uh, mm. uh, Telangana. So they had no confusion about it and they took the lead. And Congress is one party which has uh, support across the uh, Anthra divide. So I think finally they took a decision to go in for Telangana, mm. knowing that they will suffer major reversal, at least in this election in uh, Simantra. I think Chandrababu Naidu was confused in the beginning. He tried to play uh, both sides and then almost fell between the two stools. Mm. So, mm. I think now he has taken a decision that he is trying to gamble only in Simantra. Mm. Of course, TDP had some pockets of influence in Telangana. He has cobbled up an alliance with BJP, which is interestingly for pro-Telangana. Yes. TDP is against the bifurcation. So, there are contradictions, but I think people are used to this kind of contradictions. <laughs> so, let's see how they will try to do the balancing act. All right, let's see how they do the balancing act. Of course, a uh, uh, lot at stake tomorrow, 17 say, seats in the Telangana region. Interesting to see what will happen there. Now, moving on, of course, one of the biggest names who will be in the fray for the seventh phase of polling tomorrow will be BJP's Prime Ministerial nominee, Narendra Modi. He will be contesting from Vadodara against Congress's Madhusudan Mystery. The seat is considered to be a safe one for the BJP, but the locals feel if Modi gets a bigger national role to play, the region could be neglected. Here's a look. Vadodara, one of the biggest and most developed cities of Gujarat. It has become the centre of attention during these Lok Sabha elections because Chief Minister and BJP's Prime Ministerial candidate Narendra Modi is contesting from this seat. BJP has already fielded him from Varanasi, but sentiments of Gujarat's people compelled the party to give him a go in his home state too. The locals are confident of their chief minister's win, but they are worried that the region will get neglected if Modi gets a bigger role to play nationally. Vadodara Lok Sabha has seven assembly seats with around 16 lakh voters. Out of these, 8,48,529 are male, while 7,89,020 are female voters. In 2009, BJP won 15 out of the 26 seats in the state. Congress won the remaining 11 seats. In 2012 assembly polls, BJP's tally did not change much with 116 seats out of 182. It remains to be seen BJP can hold its ground in Gujarat. After strong showing in the last state assembly elections last year, BJP will be hoping to better the figures this time around. Pranav Goswami's report from Vadodara for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, interesting, isn't it, what that young man said? He said that if uh, Narendra Modi gets a national role, he's worried about what's going to happen in Vadodara and who's going to take care of some of the local issues there in the state of Gujarat. Well, of course, for uh, this election in Vadodara, more than, you know, Modi had a control and BJP has a very uh, firm footing in those areas. But the fact that he's being projected as a prime ministerial candidate should add to the BJP supporters' enthusiasm. So, those who have already concluded that he has reached Delhi and has already uh, PM would be wanting mm. to know what will happen to Gujarat, who will take care of this thing. But I think Madhodara uh, uh, may be a foregone conclusion for Mr. Uh, Modi. So, uh, even though Madhusudan Mistri is a general secretary of thing, I think that that's an area where there are very, he is aware of his limitations mm. to, uh, you know, strike it out against Mr. Modi. Then people will obviously have BJP supporters will also 
think this as not just an election for, of a Lok Sabha membership for Modi because he's being projected as PM. So what will happen and all? Let's see how uh, he will be in Delhi or he will have to think in terms of a somebody else being coming up as chief minister or whether let's see after the election we will yeah, see. Indeed, we'll have to wait for the elections. But yeah. interesting uh, just to think about it and ponder about what might just happen with that situation there. Uh, now talking about Vadodara itself and Varanasi of course. Uh, the BJP or Narendra Modi in particular has come under a lot of criticism from the Aam Aadmi Party saying that Narendra Modi, who is aspiring to be the Prime Minister of the nation, has chosen very two safe seats for him. So he has come under a lot of criticism, especially from the Aam Aadmi Party. But I, 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 I mean, it's a foregone conclusion, isn't it? I mean, at least sitting down here, we would think that Narendra Modi will win in both of those seats. Yeah, Aam Aadmi Party and some others said that why Narendra Modi is contesting from uh, two seats if he is so sure and so powerful. But I think that it's more of a polemics hmm. because I think the real reason for Mr. Modi to contest from two elections is, uh, you know, it's part of his election strategy because on the one side he wanted to send a clear message to his Gujarat that he's their leader and he's there and he wanted to sort of add to the BJP's uh, enthusiasm in that area. Uh, at the same time, uh, Modi knows the BJP's performance in UP and in Bihar will be extremely crucial for him to sort of you know, try and uh, form a government at the center. Because if you remember when Vajpayee uh, formed the government in 99 and 98, BJP did exceedingly well in uh, UP. In, in UP especially, uh, yes. Uh, they and had uh, more than 50 seats, seats. in both elections. So it is very crucial for uh, Modi's perspective that they should have a very big show in UP as well as in Bihar. So Varanasi being, uh, apart from being a, a t uh, very... Uh, holy t Hindu temple hmm. town, it has a symbolic value for uh, BJP's uh, politics. It also very, uh, the strategically located, he think that he contesting from there will have an impact on BJP's performance in UP and Bihar. So that's what, why he's trying for. So let's see how much uh, of that will happen or not. Well, indeed, of course, we'll see whether or not that happens. But before I let you go, Manoj, your final thoughts on, on, on the big day tomorrow. Of course, just three more, three more phases to go, but extremely crucial, isn't it, tomorrow as well? Final comments from you on that. Yeah, tomorrow is very important because, again, more and more seats from UP is going, where every political party, BJP, Congress, Mulayam Singh, Samajwadi Party, and Mayavati's Bhagujan Samaj Party, they have high stakes. So how UP will, you know, uh, come up is probably holding the key to this election that who will form this government. Then there is uh, Bihar equally important uh, where the Lalu Prasad Yadav uh, and Congress Alliance is uh, reportedly putting up a big challenge to BJP's attempt yes. to take an upper hand. Then in the Congress point of view, uh, Punjab will be very important because the reports say that they have an upper hand. So whether they will be able to make a you know a very big show is very crucial because they are also fighting for every single seat that yes, counts. Yes, indeed. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and in uh, Gujarat, because Bondi being the prime ministerial candidate, so BJP would like to have a major seat there, and Congress would try to deny that complete seat. Try to limit yeah. the damage as much as yeah, possible, yeah. especially but in Gujarat. But in Telangana, it's a new state coming yeah. up, new arithmetic that can also add to the you know, make and unmake the calculation. Indeed. So it's very interesting. Uh, uh, Indeed, phase. an interesting an interesting mix, an interesting phase of polling tomorrow. Go out there and vote at this time. I'd like to thank my guest, C.L. Manoj. Thank you so much for being on the show today and uh, sharing your perspective on several of those topics that we discussed. We'll slip into a very short break now, but we'll be right back to stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, in West Bengal, the focus will now shift to the southern part of the state, which is considered to be a strong bastion of traditional rivals, TMC and the left front. Nine out of the 42 seats uh, will be up for grabs on Wednesday as the state goes to polls. The TMC has retained four of its sitting MPs in these nine seats. It hopes to further erode into left strongholds. The left front lost considerable ground first in 2009 Lok Sabha polls and then in the 2011 Assembly polls. In 2009, the honours were almost even for the TMC and the CPM in these nine seats. Trinamool won five of them. It will be a strong test for the TMC chief Mamta Banerjee, who has a chance to emerge as the possible third largest party if it makes sizable gains in this phase. Well, two days before the seventh phase of polls, the war of words between the BJP and Trinamool Congress has only gotten worse. All this despite fresh election commission guidelines against any personal attacks during political campaigns. The TMZ has uh, moved the election commission against the BJP's Narendra Modi, who had uh, raised questions over the price of paintings by Mamta Banerjee. In a press conference, uh, TMZ asked Modi to apologize publicly or face defamation cases. However, the BJP criticized Mamta's party for its remarks against the prime ministerial nominee. Paintings were not sold for personal gain. The money for those paintings was, was used for good causes as well as the money was used to fund elections. And that's why the Trinamool Congress has been, it's a priority. Electoral reforms are a priority for Trinamool Congress. Trinamool Congress has got completely rattled because of the enormous support Narendra Modi ji and BJP is getting in Bengal. It is a resurgent BJP. And the people of Bengal who are fed up with the gross misrule of left parties and even of Trinamool Congress. Well, the Congress and the BJP are embroiled in a bitter war of words over a video of Robert Wadra's land deal that was brought out on Sunday. A day after BJP released the video with a booklet, the Congress came out strongly in defense of the party president's son-in-law. The party slammed the BJP's latest move as a desperation. The video alleges how Wadra was uh, allegedly helped in his uh, business deals by the Gandhi family using their clout. Congress defended Wadra by terming the charges as baseless. The party said that the issues have been raised in the High Court and Supreme Court and rejected. This is nothing but old stale material simply repackaged in a booklet and a video. They have not answered anything as far as the Adani crony capitalism allegations are concerned, for the first time yesterday their answer came. More importantly, it reflects the Boklahat and Ghabrahat, the fear and frustration of the BJP after Ms. Priyanka Vadra has made a few statements. Jis taras se Robert Vadra ko saikro karod ki kamai karai gai hai Haryana mein aur Rajasthan mein jameen ke lehen den mein bina kisi poonji nivesh ke हमारा सवाल बहुत सीधा है रॉबर्ट वाड्रा ने किसी अन्य गैर कांग्रेसी राज्य में जमीन क्यों नहीं खरीदी इस मामले की जांच होनी चाहिए Hello, Bokaro Court in Charkhand rejected BJP leader Giri Raj Singh's anticipatory bail plea in connection with his alleged hate speeches during campaign for the Lok Sabha polls. The court rejected the bail application three days after a Patna court granted him anticipatory bail in a case over the same issue. The lawyer of Giri Raj Singh said that uh, he would now move Charkhand High Court for the anticipatory bail. Giri Raj Singh, a former Bihar minister, had stoked controversy with his remarks against Modi's critics during an election meeting in Charkhand's Deogar. Three FIRs were filed against the BJP leader in Deogad, Bukharo and Patna for his alleged hate speeches. Dono Pakshi ki or se jo hai, dalil hai pesh ki gai. Aur dalil sunne ke baad, usme abhilek par upasthit sabhi tathyao ke alok mein iska nispadan aaj hi kar diya gaya hai. Aur agrim jamanat yachka ko aushikrit kar diya gaya hai. Well, ahead of the elections in Punjab on April 30th, the authorities seized drugs worth 731 crores and 77.5 lakh litres of illicit and country liquor. The huge hole in the state once again brings into focus the problem of addiction in the state. Acting against the menace, the Punjab Haryana High Court banned the sale of liquor on the highways. Our correspondent Deepak Dobhal has this report about how one village set the trend in fighting the problem. 
a normal day in Natta village in Punjab Sangroot district. When evening falls, elders gather at the chopal. Men return from work. Children play on the streets. But that was not how things used to be, at least till some time ago. The village was then struggling with a drug problem. Matters became worse when the government allowed liquor shops to be opened in the village. Village Sarpanj Baldev Singh is not only young and educated, he is always well aware of the rights of the villagers. He started a sobriety campaign invoking Section 40 of the Punjab Panchayati Raj Act. He got the village elders to pass a proposal to shut down the liquor shops. But their effort went in vain when the government allowed the shops to reopen. The villagers were not willing to accept defeat. This time, they destroyed the liquor shops and finally forced the government to bend. Today, Natta stands as a proud example for other villages of Punjab. I would like to give you the same thing that you should not be in a farm. You should not be in a farm. सबको इकट्ठा होना पड़ता है तभी तो ये काम होता है केले के बंदे का तो कोई काम नहीं है ना। The village of drug addicts and alcoholics, which was once a cause of alarm, is today transformed. The very youngster who inspired fear are now heroes in the village. सारा पंडा आदि हो गया थी, पंजाब परसेंट आदि हो गया थी। ये नमी पंचायत सारी नमी बनी थी, थोड़ी उम्र दे मुंडे थे, सारे इन्होंने इधर बारी सोचिया Social worker Kamal Anand has been trying to get liquor shops banned in Sangroor. He feels the example of Natta village should be replicated in other places as well. He says awareness among the youth has helped around 100 other villages to adopt the model in Punjab. The फेवर में है और ड्रग्स और लीकर के खिलाफ है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन भी यही कहता है परंतु असलियत में उन्होंने जो सरकार है पंजाब की उन्होंने इस तरह का जो सिग्नल है वो लोगों को नहीं दिया ड्रग एंड अल्कोहल एडिक्शन इज अ डीप रूटेड प्रॉब्लम इन पंजाब न्यूअर फॉर्म्स ऑफ नारकोटिक्स आर पुशिंग फ्रेश बैचेस ऑफ यूथ इनटू स्टूपर एवरी ईयर बट डिस्पाइट दिस द गवर्नमेंट हैज इंसिस्टेड ऑन सेटिंग एन एनुअल सेल्स टारगेट ऑफ 34 करोड़ लीकर बॉटल्स फॉर इट्स वेंट्स but villages like Natta could buck the trend and remain sober. Deepak Dobal from Sangroor for Rajya Sabha TV. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the Bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.